Well, it lasted 18 years and finally went pop. So let's uh, do a little forensics and see what happened and why it failed. Check it out. I know I opened up a can of worms when I showed off my, what, almost 20 year old CFL bulb that finally, finally packed it in. Now this thing is so old, if we look at the date coding, I don't even know there's a date code on there, there should be. Is it on here? Anybody know the date codes? Does it say on this here? This is probably the date code here. Anyway, it's commercial commercial electric was the, the company. And as I say, this thing here was so old that it runs so long that the actual plastic cracked and fatigued and crumbled just from the UV light and the heat from the lamp. And the last time it failed, I had to do a repair on the inverter to make it work again. It has been running for years. Inquiring minds want to know what failed on it this time. Was it the lamp? Did the actual lamp fail or did the inverter go bad yet again? So I guess we'll figure that out. I'll, I'll try applying some power to this uh, to the socket here and we'll see whether we've got any voltage going up to the actual lamp to see if the inverter is running. Uh, we can also measure the uh, actual uh, burner here to see if, they, if the filaments have gone open. But probably the easiest thing would be first to try and just uh, see if we've got any, any voltage here off this inverter. Because if the inverter is dead, then of course nothing else matters. Nothing else is going to work. Uh, I could try my power supply for a neon lamp, bring that up to it and see whether the, the burner will glow. Because obviously if the burner itself, if, if, the, if the tube itself is okay, we should be able to make it glow. But if the, if the glass is, say, fractured and broken and it's, and it, and it's cracked and released the uh, vacuum, then even with the, uh, the neon power supply, it won't do anything. So that might be the first thing to try. We'll just see if the burner itself is any good. So we'll do that by just disconnecting it from the power supply first. Because if I put a 1500 volt power supply to any of these wires here with the power with the uh, inverter connected, well, the inverter is not going to work at that point. The inverter would be toast. So I'm just going to warm up the iron. We'll disconnect the wires for the lamp. And then I'll, I'll get a, a 1500 volt neon power supply. And it certainly is not going to make the lamp light up. But if we get glow, if we can make it glow, then uh, we know that the lamp itself is good. That's a quick, easy, quick, easy test to determine whether the problem is the inverter or the burner. Again, the age of this thing and the number of hours that are on at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if the actual burner itself is uh, what the fault is now on it. But as I say, this is, this is a pretty old lamp. Pretty old, very old. This gives you an idea. The plastic is so old that it just cracks apart. This lamp does not owe me anything at this state of the game. That's for sure. Inverter is now separate. I can actually remove the remainder of the plastic that was still on the the uh, the burner from the old the, the old base. So I've got the lamp connected across the neon power supply. This is 1500 volts. It is uh, 14 milliamps. If the burner is good, it should glow when I apply power. Which I just have bare wires here, so I'm going to stick them into the end of a, a live cord. And if the burner is any good, 
we should see some light. If we don't see light, then the burner itself is no good. And we see light, which means that the, the lamp has not lost its vacuum. It still has mercury and it still has argon gas in it. Next we'll check to see whether the filaments are open. Because if one of the filaments were to go open, of course the lamp won't strike because it's a hot cathode type lamp. It's not a cold cathode. So to get your thermionic emission for the lamp to fire properly, it has to heat up the cathodes, which is just a filament. So we should test that, and if we've got continuity for both of the cathodes, then the burner is okay. Now we can look at what went wrong with the inverter again. It usually is what goes wrong is the inverter fails and then it causes the tubes to crack. But in the case of the big lamp like this, okay, we've got continuity on that one. And what about this one? Does this one have continuity too? Or is this one open? This one might be open and that might be why the lamp doesn't work. Okay, so this side is open. So this lamp is shot. The, burn, uh, the, the uh, power supply is probably still okay. But because the filament has gone open on this side, we know what's happened this time. This lamp is shot. The filament is burned open on this side. But that's still a very good run, considering how long this lamp lasted. I mean, you can see the glass is actually, the phosphorus is actually uh, darkening. It's so old. You know, I'm, I'm so amazed that this lamp lasted the life that it did. But now we know this time it wasn't the inverter that failed. It was the actual burner itself. I'm surprised that the capacitors have lasted as long as they have. But if we look at the capacitors in this one, we will see that they actually used high quality Rubicon electrolytic caps. And that is probably why this thing has lasted all the years that it has. I have another one of these. Actually, I think I have two more of them. Two more in boxes. Because I bought three of them at the time. And uh, one of them burned out like almost immediately. It failed within, I don't know, maybe six months. So I contacted the manufacturer and I gave them the lot number on the back here. And they said, oh, okay, we'll send you two replacements. And they sent me two brand new replacements, which are under a different brand, but they sent me two replacements for the one that failed. Uh, the other one was running for the longest time, and it finally packed it in, I think, uh, I'm going to say two years ago. And uh, it was replaced. But this is the this is the original one, and I say it's still going. Fairchild transistors on the inverter. I'll keep probably keep the, the transistors on this thing because they're always good to have. I stand corrected. This is one of the replacement ones. When I had um, originally, I had three in my garage before I put up the linear lights. I had just three bulbs in here, and uh, or I had three three of these ones, or was it two? No, it was three. Because the light right over my bench was one of these, and the light behind me was one of these, and the light over the door. There was like there was like five incandescent type bulbs put in here when I built the place, and I had three 42 waters, and uh, the other ones were like smaller bulbs, in the other part of the garage. And say one of them burned out immediately, and the company sent me the company sent me two more to replace it, and I ended up using one of them. Uh, one of them got broken. And this is one of the replacements. This is actually one that I use as part of my studio lighting behind me, my one of my fill lights. So I've got another one, another, another brand new one that will be replacing this one that uh, died. But this one's also very old. This one here is, uh, this is a TCP, I guess. TCP light. Yeah, TCP. 42 watt. And this was a replacement for one of these commercial electric ones that failed before. I think they're identical. Base looks a little different on them. 
but this one still works. This is this is actually part of my studio lights. I have another one that's a 65 watt, if you can believe that. I think this one's big. I got a 65 watt as well. What I am curious though is if I switch the the burner around, the side that was open was on this side, which goes right to the transformer. If I put the side that's got continuity on the transformer and put the other side that's open on the other side, will it light? I guess we'll have to plug it in and find out. So for this test, I've attached it to my Okay, whose car horn is going? It's not mine. Horn works, try the lights, buddy. Someone's car alarm is going. Now that that annoyance is gone, will this light up? No, it won't. Is there voltage? Well, I guess we can. We can see if the oscillator is running. I can use my scope to see that. Or I could just touch it, see if I get a shock. That might not be such a wise thing to do. Hey, but when I shorted those leads together, it flashed. Interesting. This is the side that's open. So what happens if I just short them together? And now we'll apply power and see whether this thing will light. And it does. Will it attain full brightness? I guess we'll find out pretty quick. So we know the inverter works. It's amazing, you know, that this thing is this old and uh, it just refuses to die. It's probably going to die right now. Let's let it run here for a few minutes and see if this thing will actually uh, go out in a hail of glory. Uh, I get a feeling it's going to die. We're going to end of life this thing. Right here before your eyes, this light is going to blow up. It's flickering a bit. The fact that it's actually still lighting up at all though is amazing. There it goes. Not looking too good now it's starting to flicker as you can see on camera this thing is really there we go we just killed we just cooked it ah there we've cooked the lamp we've totally cooked the lamp now the inverter is still working because you can see it's still glowing but uh, we've now cooked this one this one is now end of life I popped it in a way that photonic induction would be proud no, he'd be proud only if I took my sledgehammer to it and had bits of glass all over the place. Anyway, there we go. That has to be a record for a compact fluorescent. And finally, finally it died. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.